Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm going to have a look at processing some of the data that I captured last night in the Iris Nebula. Now there's a nice wet night here tonight, so certainly not much imaging going on here. So I'll move across to the other machine, and this is the one that I use for image processing. I used to use it for capturing data, but now I've moved to another machine for that. So I will load up a project that I created, and this is where I store all of my process icons. So if you go to the first workspace, these ones in the top left are the ones that I typically use. So this is Blink, and this lets us flick through the images and see what sort of quality we're looking at. Uh, look for ones with uh, non-round stars, things like that, and we can drop those out of our good images. Uh, Subframe Selector uses it uh, will measure aspects of your subs and let you empirically compare them. Now, I use that to determine which is my reference frame for uh, registration. Then we'll move into batch pre-processing, which essentially calibrates and does all the rest of these steps here in the bottom for you. Um, it's generally recommended from all of the sources that I was reading to not integrate as part of batch pre-processing and to do that separately. So again, I believe I got some of this was from uh, Light Vortex. Um, a guy that would give some really, really good tutorials, and also using the book Inside Picks Insight to get up the settings, the differences for all of the different uh, sample numbers. So what we'll do first is we will open up Blink. Oh, apologies, that's just a marker. So if I go to Process, All Processes, and then Blink, this will let me open all of my images. So if I go to where my lights are. I'm only going to look at the 240s. The other ones I could probably delete them, but I, I don't like deleting data. So we'll wait for these to load. It doesn't take terribly long. Again, there's only 44 images here, so it's not a massive quantity. And what this will do is it will open up a preview of them. And we can flick down through the list, and you can actually have it play, and then it will very very quickly run down through the list so that looks incredibly noisy around the center I suppose it's maybe just an artifact you can see that it's jumping in and jumping out it's maybe just an artifact of my display as I am running across remote desktop so what I am going to look at is I'm going to pick an area and I'm going to move this up here so I'm going to, I like I like the look of this area so I can see some banding, but I'm not too worried about that. I think that will go away. So generally what I do is I will move down through the images and look for anything that looks like non-round stars. And I can see some bloating, but again, with a digital SLR, there's not much you can do about that. So, so far, so good. Just looking for anything that's really wacky, and certainly we wouldn't want to keep see that some of the stars the, the, the bloat does change that's probably an artifact of, of a bit of wonky guiding so I don't think I would reject any of those it's a wee bit questionable but I'll keep it see there is a, a star trail or a, a satellite or something has went through I think we'll just we'll just leave it in anyway not that fussy, especially whenever you're stacking large numbers, things like that will average out. So it looks like all of our images are fine in this case, so we can just close that down. So we'll open up Subframe Selector and we will open it and we will add in these images. And then all you do is once they're added, you click Measure in the bottom. And this does take some time, so I will pause the video now while it works. Hey, welcome back. So that is gathered up, it's finished off all of the images. So what we were going to do is we're going to sort the table by full width half maximum. And this is basically the width of the stars if you like. So we want to keep it in ascending because obviously we want the, the tightest stars. So generally what I do here is I will look at these and I will look at the top three. And for me, that's 22, 33, 21. 
and then I will flick across to signal to noise ratio now we want to go descending so none of those appear in the top so we're looking at 0.66 to 0.58 and that is much bigger so let's see if we can swap that back yeah so I, I think in this case there's not much in these three I think I'll just go with number 22 so what I do is I go out into the lights well, you just missed a step there so I hover over this and it will pop up the name of the file so I can see that in the time the name at the end there is 001934 which corresponds to the time it was taken so if we expand this a little bit 001934 and I tag the front of this with an underscore to pull it to the top ref and this basically is my reference frame for this set so that is me done with this uh, I'll maybe explain that SNR weight. So obviously this is the the weighting, how much signal to noise ratio you're getting. So in this case you would want it descending because you want the highest number you can. But you can see that the full width half maximum, the width of the stars has increased dramatically from it was what around 3 3.7 up to 5.4. So that's about a 50% increase. If you look at the SNR weight. To see how much it increases from the worst to the best it's 0.58 to 0.66 which is what would be 10 percent at best so you would be getting a 10 percent gain in signal to noise versus a 50 percent gain in bloated stars so for me that's not worth the trade-off so we'll close this and we will move into the batch pre-processing so i already have this loaded with some of my custom settings to be perfectly honest I can't remember which they are I think it's things like these CFA and what it's going to do and a template for cosmetic correction so the first thing we're going to load in is the lights so we'll just pick all of these and it will chuck them all in then we will load our flats so this is going to make us a master flat for this run we will chuck those in so a bit of a, a constraint around batch pre-processing is that if you, only master files that are created using the batch pre-processing script will be recognized as masters if you try to add them using the add darks, add bias, add flats. It's something that I believe to do with the fits header. So in theory, you could go in and edit, edit that on the file, but I find the easiest way to go around it is to use the add custom button. So we will select the file and we will go to our master folder. So we'll start off with the bias, image type, bias and for the bias we don't need a time because it's obviously as short as we can get if we click OK we go to bias it has master bias and we have ticked use master bias over here so now we will add the dark so this one is has an extra step so you select dark and then you need to put in the exposure time so what it's actually going to do here is that it's going to match the lights with the master dark so this is in seconds which means we put in the 240 and if we click OK 240 seconds master dark the next stage is to select our reference image that we, we uh, determined earlier so I'll double click that and we select an output directory so for me this will be not my previous one actually this is a completely different folder so we'll come in and we pick that overall folder there and what it will do is that it will actually put the master flat into this master folder and it will create a new folder I think called there's one's called calibrated another one called registered and it's the registered folder that we're going to pick up and use later on so now if one thing that I would suggest doing is clicking the diagnostics button it'll just have a quick look at what you've selected and tell you if you've missed anything obvious um, you could note that we have not select use master flat because we are actually going to let this create a master flat for us so now we will just click run and that will start crunching through all of the files depending on how many you do it can take it can take 20 minutes it can take an hour I, I'm not entirely sure how long it will take for you but I will pause the video here and I'll return once it's finished welcome back now I'm just going to jump in I noticed that it had finished so the script is complete to check this we can open our folder and we should see 
the various files. So that is our registered images. They aren't terribly useful as I don't think this is enough data um, for a target like this. I mean, it's 44 images at four minutes each. You know, that's only going to be what three hours. So it's, it's you need much more than that. I I believe anyway. I may stack this just to see what it turns out like. I can show an image of what it looks like with more data, but this just shows you the structure. So if we look in here, you can see the flat that it has created. So that's only valid for this session. Once you've lifted the camera off the telescope, you need, you need new flats. I have a Newtonian, so I lift mine off at least once a night, and that's for collimation, so I have to do flats every day. Um, so that's pretty much it so we can exit this now if I was going to because this is 44 images I would load up this script sorry this process and I would go in here and I would go into my registered and you add in the image files first and then you add in the drizzle files so I create these my knowledge about drizzle is that it was something that was created back whenever Hubble first went up into space they had a problem with the mirror and they had to find a way to improve the performance of this multi-million pound telescope while they fixed the mirror problem. So Drizzle is some way of interpolating pixels or something like that. So we add those in. And for me all of these settings stay static and I would just hit apply global and this would stack them up. I'm going to I might actually make that run just for my own curiosity, but I won't have it as part of this video. What I will do is I will open up some Iris Nebula stuff that I did a few weeks ago. So this was 10 days ago and it was under a full moon. So the data isn't isn't perfect given the full moon. So I'll just stretch this up a bit. And we'll apply an auto stretch to it just so you can see what it looks like. So I will have a look and this is lights so these were three minutes each and there were 86 of them so that is one and a half hours times three roughly which is four and a half hours of data to get me this I did have some some bad noise it's not so much noise it's actually an artifact it's not traditional noise it's actually read noise that's coming in from my uh, master bias there's you can see some waves across the way but also there are definite streaks down the image if if I was to in fact I'll sort of segue a wee bit just to show this so if I was to run automatic background extraction on this you will see just how bad this effect becomes there are issues with shooting low ISOs uh, everybody strives for the unity gain but I have found that with my camera shooting a low ISO uh, certainly ISO 200 gives me some strange effects so you can see what just happens I mean that is that is horrendous it is just ruined so you can see vertical lines uh, that is no good to me so this is one of the reasons why I moved back up to ISO 400 so close this and drop back to the other workspace so I think that is everything for my data what I will be doing is I will be keeping this data because now it has been calibrated so once I have stacked it just had a look I will delete the registered folder and the calibrated folder calibrated lights and it will be the debared this is what I will be taking forward as my uh, calibrated light data and I will be adding this to subsequent sessions and hopefully if I can get myself enough images then I can get a, a truly lovely image of the Iris Nebula it's one of my favorite targets and it's just it is a very difficult target to shoot I only really get to shoot it from kind of April through until September and then it tends to be quite low in the sky for me but that is pretty much the content that I wanted for this video. Uh, thanks for listening.